What's happening everybody? Dave here with the 1966 Plymouth Fury. But what I'm going to show you, I bet uh, tons of you have experienced this and struggled with it. And, you know, some of you maybe even never came up with a solution. Uh, especially if you have an aftermarket radiator like I have. Or maybe not necessarily, but uh, but usually it's an aftermarket radiator that might have this problem. After your car warms up fully, you start to notice a little bit of leakage around the radiator cap. You know, just a little bit. It's not like pouring out, but it's just a tiny bit. And if you just barely touch the cap, it could start to leak a little bit. And you're going, what the heck? Okay, you know, try a different radiator cap. Still didn't fix it. I'm about to show you how you can fix it. And I was struggling with this. For, for quite a few weeks actually because I knew there was no leak you know I had no head gasket leak I had no heater core leak I had no radiator leak I had no leak anywhere in, in the cooling system but I would still notice a little bit of uh, a lost coolant in the reservoir you know after I parked the car you know, after driving it for a day or so and I was really struggling with it all right, what I did, you know the little rubber seals, you got one on the top and one down inside the cap. I took the two extra seals off of another cap and installed them on my original one. So I basically have doubled up the layers of the rubber seals. Problem solved. Don't ask me why. I have no idea why. Uh, and I noticed with the double, you know, doubled up sealing, the cap seals better. You can tell when you put it in place. You know, it's just a little, you have to push down on it more to get it to sit in place better. Like a, a radiator should. You know, this radiator is brand new here and so is the cap. They're both brand new. And uh, so, yeah, it's not that difficult, but I'll, I'll show you real quick how you can do this. Okay, you will need some sort of pick like this, you know, a small pick. I'll put a link down below where you can get an assortment of these, but you can get these at just about any auto parts store, hardware store. You know, if you, if you, you should have a set of picks in your toolbox at all times because they're very handy for all kinds of things. Okay, now what these are, they're basically really wide, flat rubber pieces, you know, flat and round, and they go inside this, uh, you know, where the spring mechanism is. There's like a little, uh, see how, see how it, uh, this pops up right here? The rubber seal tucks underneath there. Same thing for the one at the base of the cap, it tucks underneath this, uh, you know, it's almost like a big flat washer, I guess you could call it. <clears throat> but if you use a, a pick, you can get up under it. You know, take your time doing this because you don't want to damage the rubber piece that you're trying to reuse. And be careful with your hands too, you know, you don't want to stick yourself because this is spring loaded. You know, this whole mechanism is sprung. So be careful doing this. You basically have to get your pick up underneath here and start to pry on it. You know, start to pull back on it and it'll start to, the hole will start to bring out around the outside there. And you'll just have to work your way around all the way, just slowly pulling it around there. That's how you get the old one off of your other radiator cap. Same down here. You know, just get your pick up under there Keep cramming it up in there and carefully pry back on it. See how it starts to pull off of it right there. And uh, and to put it on, you just have to you know you just have to methodically start from one end and sort of you know get it to start underneath there. Kind of like putting on a, a two you know a tire on a motorcycle or something. You just have to work your way around to get it to start to tuck in place underneath 
these two guys here. And I can just about promise you, your frustratingly leaky radiator cap issue will be solved. Uh, and you'll feel it too. You'll feel a difference when you put it on. You know, usually with a good solid fit on a radiator cap, you usually have to push down and turn, you know, and you'll feel it. And I didn't really feel that on this cap when it was new. Or, you know, when, I, when it was unmodified, so to speak. You know, we just kind of, it just didn't feel good and snug on there. And now it does. So, very pleased about that. Because I was losing, it was the mysterious coolant loss. And you can Google that all day long. People struggle with that. And, you know, often it's a, you got a head gasket leak or some other leak inside the engine. Uh, you want to check your check your oil. You know, get get your dipstick out, and if you see like a milky gray color, that means the coolant has now mixed into your oil of your engine, and you'll notice it on the dipstick. That will tell you that you got a head gasket problem. You know, that's more serious. Or if you're seeing uh, leaks of coolant in the cabin of the car that probably means you have a leaky heater core also that can be uh, kind of difficult to resolve but if you've already investigated those you know that's not the case and what I noticed also you know once the car really gets up the temperature a little bit of vapor would be coming out of here which means it's slowly but surely losing coolant you know from the overflow tank reservoir uh, and you smell it also as you drive the car you know especially when the uh, cooling fan would kick on you could smell coolant a little bit that means it's somewhere leaking around here and dribbling down the inside of the radiator so after you do this hack make sure you rinse off the outside of the radiator completely you know get you a you know take the car outside and get your water hose and rinse off every part of the radiator on the outside front and back to get any evidence of coolant off that way you're not uh, still thinking you have a problem so uh, yeah totally pleased with how that turned out so uh, make sure you uh, scan through our channel we got all kinds of videos about this car and other cars both new and old style cars motorcycles atvs scooters um, you know classic stuff brand new stuff working around the house so uh, yeah scroll through the channel and you'll find some things that might help you either now or in the future so we hope you subscribe to the channel and uh you know if what we do helps you there's a thanks button underneath the video make sure you click that and maybe throw us a donation if what we've done helps you because these are free videos, so to speak. YouTube is completely free. So, uh, you know, if any channel ever helps you solve a problem, try to help them out as well, you know, because doing videos, they, these may not be professional videos, so to speak, but they still take time to do, and we're trying to help people out. So we always appreciate it when, uh, you know, when the viewers help us out as well. Anyway, once again, this is a 1966 Plymouth Fury 3. Uh, this has a newer generation uh, Dodge Dakota 5.9 liter 360 cubic inch engine bulletproof motor easy to get parts for runs really well you know that's always a bonus because with the older classic engine sometimes they're hard to get parts for hard to keep going you know it just becomes more of a pain than anything so the previous owner installed this engine in this car and I really like it I've never experienced the uh, the 360 uh, Magnum so to call it's called and um, it's a good it's a good engine for sure anyway check out our channel we hope you all have a good day we'll see y'all later